you, I know, have had some pretty amazing prophetic dreams, including one recently back in March, I think early March, warning the approaching six storms. And I would like to give you the chance to explain to our listeners that prophetic dream because I think it's very significant. Okay, Tony. Yeah, you know, I've had two dreams that I can recall uh, in the last uh, few months that I've woken up and literally sat straight up in bed and reverently said, God, please no, no, God. And just, you know, after I had, the day after I had this dream, um, all day long I was extremely fatigued spiritually, mentally, emotionally, it wore me out. The Lord made this very real to me. Um, So I'm going to record, I'm going to read it as I recorded it uh, the following morning. And I had this dream on March the 11th of this year, 2018, and I'll read it I'll read it as I wrote it the next morning. The dream I had last night will be difficult to share. One, because it was so traumatic to have seen and have been involved in, and two, the symbolism and the meanings are hard to capture. So as always, I will share what I saw, and I will leave the timing and inter- interpretation up to God. Dream of overwhelming devastation times two. It was almost as though in both the natural and in the spirit where we were being warned. The people knew they had been warned. I knew I had been warned. I had been warned by God, and I had warned many others as instructed by God. It was almost like we were being foretold of that which was coming as we looked at the map. There was not a single state that was not affected by these approaching storms. From the West Coast to the East Coast to the Midlands, everyone would see devastation. Even now, I can see the map, and I can see the swirling color, colors gathering. What's odd is that normally, as meteorologists would show on the radar that which was coming and use different colors symbolizing the severity, they literally ran out of colors to be able to accurately describe that which would hit. I can hear even now as they foretold, and were trying to tell the people, oh, please, and I quote, oh, please, my God, prepare and know that even your preparation may not save you. Now, admittedly, here's the part that I don't understand, but I will report what I saw and heard. They said there were six storms coming. These storms had each been given names. This time, they were given names of animals and birds as to how each would affect the land and the people. We were told that the first storm would be as a bird, and it would peck away at everything and shake things mightily, but would also be used to deliver the message as in days of old. I cannot recall the second storm's name. They told us that we would experience the end of all things when the wolf came, and it was the third storm. They showed us on the map, through tears and stuttering and hanging their heads, they told us to prepare. One of the last things they said before they went off air was, we really have nothing to compare this to. We must get ready because you have never seen anything like this before. That night it hit, storm number one. It hit with a magnitude that no one expected. I remember that I could not gather myself enough to discern if this was natural or man-made because it literally seemed to be both simultaneously. The winds, the rain, the wreckage, everything. I recall watching the large trees bending under the weight of the wind and seeing the waters rising on the coast and seeing the heartland pounded by a mighty force. The next morning, just as it was named, it had pecked and shaken everything The word had indeed traveled across country at the devastation that had occurred. Now it was time to move on to the next storm warning, and this is where it gets tough. Again, we looked at the map, and literally we all gasped as we saw the size and scope of that which was coming and knowing the magnitude of the first. This time, all they would say was, we really don't know what to say. We really don't know how to warn. Just prepare as best you can. The next day, it hit. During the daylight hours it came. It was really odd, for you could see the storm clouds gathering, and you could literally hear it coming. I remember seeing the looks of fear and dread on people's faces. Some people prayed. Others checked their supplies. For one of the first times ever, though, it seemed as though everyone was taking the warnings to heart, and there was little to no mockery. The first storm had taken care of all of that. The the power by which these storms hit is truly unexplainable. Every foundation was shaken. Every room of the house had been moved. I saw naval destroyers literally capsized on dry ground far from the coast from where they had come. I saw death and destruction in unprecedented ways. 
There was not a single family, business, or church that had not been affected in some way or devastated. I recall back now that while it was happening, that I literally expected to be swept away any moment, and I expected to be standing before my Lord at any second. The cries of pain and heartache was nothing I want to hear again. Again, the wind, the rain, the shaking, the sounds of explosions, the waters rising, the ground splitting, and seeing the ocean waters flowing through rivers. I recall after storm number two had hit thinking, now I know why Jesus said that those days must be cut short, for if they were not, they, no flesh would be saved. I remember thinking, my God, this is only storm two of six. All of humanity and all of the earth will be wiped out and the earth will disintegrate beneath our feet. Even those most prepared among us, many of them perished, for there appeared in many cases, in fact, most cases, to be no escape. There were godly among us who had been taken, along with many of those who were not believers. I noticed, though, that even as I surveyed the landscape the following day, I could not believe the devastation and damage. Everything had indeed been shaken, just as foretold by Christ. The one thing I saw that surprised me now was it seemed to be very few if any who did not believe everyone was bo broken in an unforeseen way a level of brokenness that i had never witnessed before ever amidst the tragic tragedy and devastation and carnage there arose a brokenness among the people for they knew it was only a matter of time it was then that we gathered to hear the next forecast we were all so tired and so weary but there was a deep work going on in the heart of man it was evident that God was at work. This would be the wolf coming this time. As the forecaster took the stage, he was visibly shaken, but not in despondency. This time, something was different. He stood before the camera. He gathered himself as best he could, and I heard him say these words. The people are repenting. The people are repenting. He then said, and it's because of this repentance that, well, look at these storms now. Yes, they are still coming, but they have been dramatically weakened and will not cause the devastation we had originally anticipated. This reporter wept on national television. I recall myself and all those around me weeping and praising God, and me being me, my mind immediately went to, okay, now it's time to gather the harvest. The fields are white in the harvest. Let us go forth now and bring them in. At this, I awoke. Yeah, that's powerful. And people, if you want to actually read that um, th that dream, Cara Pickering has um, published it on prophetictimelines.wordpress.com. And so I was actually able to follow along while Marty was reading that on Cara's website. So that's one place. I'm, I know you've put it on Facebook and things too, but if people want a quick way to be able to go and read that prophecy I think that's a good place to do it. The six approaching storms, a sobering dream given to Marty Breeden. And that again is at prophetictimelines.wordpress.com. So Marty, what are your thoughts now, uh, Uma, well, about a month onward from having had that dream? I think it's inevitable that something's coming, and I do think it's going to be devastating. I think much of the dream is literal. Some of it obviously is, is symbolic, but I do think that we are going to go through uh, some really, really hard times, but this confirms what I've sensed in my heart, Tony, and what I believe the Word says, that in the midst of tragedy, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of crisis, that God is going to pour out His Spirit, and we are going to experience a great Latter-day outpouring. That's the real thing. I think it very possible it could surpass the Book of Acts. I think that, you know, with, with all of, of the technology today, with, with all of everything that's going on, I think people— are, are longing in a sense to see something beyond the natural. And the, there's a there's a, an ache in the heart of man for something supernatural. But And I think that it's going to be during this time that God is going to reveal himself in a powerful way. And I think that's what we saw after the devastation. I think that that will cause a level of brokenness and people will be more pliable. Their hearts will be softer. And there will be a, that brokenness often leads to revival. I'm somewhat of a student of past revivals. And I think it's very possible that, that we could be in an atmosphere right now, in an environment right now, that that will be coming. But there will have to be a brokenness and abandonment, almost an abandonment of hope, I think, before people reach that. Uh, that 
Yes, uh, and I, I'm sure there will be some people who will, will probably have the question, do you think that some of, or any of these storms are actually weather-related or is that just completely symbolic? I don't know. I don't I don't know. that. And I've been asked that before, and that's a great question, one that I want to want to speculate on. I know what I saw was hard to discern, if, if food for thought, that some of the things that I was describing seeing in the dream almost sound like a nuclear winter. It, it it could be that, but I, I don't know. Yeah, true. I did have a word recently that um, that I wanted to share this evening that is important. And um, keep in mind, as you and I have, have become friends over the last while, you know I don't th- say things that I don't feel uh, you won't hear me say so say the Lord. But I, when I feel like the Lord has spoken, this is what uh, I will say. I feel that this is what I heard the Lord say. And, and I, I had one of those experiences shortly after this dream, probably within about a week of this dream. Um, you know, I live about 70 miles outside of Washington, D.C. I live in, in rural Virginia. As we say in Virginia, as the crow flies, about 70 couple miles outside of, of Washington, D.C. One day, several weeks ago, I walked out my back door and I heard this and I believe it to be from the Lord as I looked toward the east because where, where I live, will fly over my house as they're descending uh, to fly into Dulles International Airport almost around the clock. As I um, walked on my back porch and looked toward D.C., I believe that I heard the Lord speak this to my heart. Washington will burn, and you will see the smoke rise from where you live. One day you will walk out your back door, and you will see the blast and the fire from where you now stand. Great fear will fall upon the nation on that day, and the great chaos that will ensue. Don't fear that day, but prepare your heart now for when that day comes. Wow, that's powerful. So how should people prepare their hearts for that day? I, I don't think, Tony, there has ever been a more important time. You know, the Word tells us God, God speaks to us, and He says, draw nigh to me, and I will draw nigh to you. And now is no time to be double-minded. You know, the, the word says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. It has never been more important now to share um, for the reason of hope that is within us. That's what the word tells us. And, you know, as a tool for evangelism, as, 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 you know, the, the word says that we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. If you don't know how to share the Lord, share your testimony. And, you know, have, a, have an understanding, a basic understanding in end times. Um, You don't need to be a scholar, just have a basic understanding because one thing that I have have seen in the last 24 months, you know, I I personally believe that all good things start at the foot of the cross. And some people though are not going to be reached by some of the methods that we've used in the past. But one thing I have noticed, everyone wants to know what's coming. They want to know what does the future hold. They want to know, Bible prophecy is a real for so many people right now. So if we can have a basic understanding and, and have have, an, have some answers for some of the things that are that are going on right now, uh, I think that's very important. Share our faith. But for, for us as Christians to prepare doing what God has called us to do, whatever he's placed in our heart to do, do it now. If he's called you to ministry, you know, make sure that you're ministering. If he's called you to fast, love one or those you're at your at your at, at your, you know, your co-workers, reach out to them, but be who you know you're supposed to be. Don't let your guard down now. Don't lose the wheel, so to speak, uh, because we're so close to things changing. Everything can change right now in a moment of time. 